There's, I, I just wanted to share with you one other quick thing. This is from uh, the Washington Post today, the Daily 202, and uh, by James Holman. And what he, he says, the, the essence of the article is that if you really want to know the priorities of the Republican Party and the Donald Trump administration, all you have to do is look at the news dump over the holidays where, where they, they just, you know, they put out this, the stuff, excuse me, they put out the stuff that they basically wanted buried. And he starts out by saying, the fireworks seen at Mar-a-Lago on New Year's Eve were paid for by billionaire industrialist David Koch, according to the Palm Beach Daily News, as part of another private party put on by an even more exclusive club. That was at the Flagler Museum down the street from Donald Trump's uh, Gilded Age uh, place. And uh, so, you know, he says, this is the new Gilded Age, and here's what's going on. These are the, these are the, these are the things that Trump did that were announced over the Christmas holiday, Christmas, New Year's holiday, that you might have missed because, hey, who's watching the news, right? Number one, overturning key regulations on fracking. On the last business day of the year, the interior, this is quoting Chris Mooney, on the last business day of the year, the Interior Department rescinded a 2015 Obama administration rule that would have set new environmental limitations on hydraulic fracturing or fracking on public lands. It would have tightened standards for well construction and wastewater management required the disclosure of the chemicals contained in fracking fluids and probably driven up the cost for many fracking activities. Uh, we've got to, we, <laughs> got to stop that. And so, yep, sure enough, they stopped that. Thank you, Arthur. Weaken, number two, weakening the rules that were designed to prevent another deep water horizon spill. The agency also moved to water down the well control rule, which is intended to prevent the kind of blowout that killed 11 workers. This is the Bureau of Safety and Environmental Enforcement. Declaring number three, declaring open season on migratory birds. On the Friday before Christmas, the entire Interior Department quietly rolled back an Obama-era policy aimed at protecting migratory birds by announcing that oil, gas, wind, and solar operators who accidentally kill birds will no longer be prosecuted. Number four, reinstating mining leases for Ivanka Trump's landlord. Yes, seriously. This is the Boundary Waters Canoe Area Wilderness of northern Minnesota. On the Friday before Christmas, the Interior Department moved to renew expired leases for copper and nickel mining operations on the border of the park, reversing an Obama decision. This directly benefits the Chilean mining firm owned by billionaire Andronico Luxic, who rents a six-bedroom mansion to the first daughter and her husband, Jared Kushner, in the posh Calorama neighborhood of Washington, D.C. Hmm. Interesting. Number five, letting nursing hooks off the home off the hook when their patients suffer in their care. The Trump administration reversing guidelines put into place under Obama, scaling back the use of fines against nursing homes that harm residents or place them in grave risk of injury. So if you run a nursing home and you want to, you know, beat up your patients or hey, the open season on old folks. Number six, civil servants may not get a bonus because the rich got a tax cut. The White House is now warning agencies to brace for even deeper cuts in the budget. In the 2019 budget, it'll announce early next year, part of an effort to lower the federal deficit to pay for the new tax law. Number seven, undercutting enforcement by waging a war of attrition against the bureaucracy. Uh, OSHA, for example, wave of recent retirements, has depleted the managerial staff of the agency's 70 field offices. It's been a 6% drop in personnel. The Chemical Safety Board, one of 19 small agencies, Trump has marked for elimination. We don't need no safety from chemicals. Number eight, reneging on a federal commitment to fund a major infrastructure project. Well, we'll see. He, he still says he's going to do it, but he's going to do it with money from the billionaires. So. Number uh, nine, firing all the members of the Presidential Advisory Council on HIV AIDS. He notified them by FedEx on Friday last week uh, without warning. Number 10, maneuvering behind the scenes to sabotage the census. They want the census takers to start asking people to prove that they're citizens of the United States, which is going to cause a lot of people to say, you know, no to the census takers. I mean, I'm talking about citizens of the United States who may look Hispanic and, and have not gone through the trouble, you know, who, who, have, who, are, who are Hispanic genetically, but have, you know, are actual U.S. citizens. They were born in this country, their parents were their grandparents, whatever but they may not have their citizenship documents around or they don't have their passports or whatever. And I mean, you know, who wants to go through that, right? It's like, it's like the whole thing with voting. The Republicans now not only are trying to make it hard for you to vote, but in order to help their gerrymandering, they want to scare away Hispanics from answer, and, and Asians for, uh, from answering census questions so that they don't get counted 
so that those particularly big cities where you see a lot of, 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 of these folks, um, uh, so, you know, they have less re representation in Congress. I mean, it's just, it's just bizarre. Anyhow, it is a great article in today's Washington Post. Rich in Greenwood, Indiana. Hey, Rich, what's on your mind today? Hey, Tom. Happy New Year. Thanks. Back at you. You're welcome. Um, I wanted to offer the idea that if the, uh, the New Deal hadn't been um, generated, that we never would have, nationally, we never would have had the, the manufacturing uh, capacity that we basically just flipped the switch on to be war production that allowed us to um, enter the war and by by any measure be the the what the, the energy that won the war yeah yeah you Hitler know? Hitler revived the German economy after World War one and after the big hit it took from the Treaty of Versailles by number one reneging on the Treaty of Versailles but number two massive internal infrastructure projects, just mm -hmm. absolutely massive projects to uh, build the Autobahn, you know, build the Volkswagen. He and the, he, the, the Nazi regime invented the Volkswagen and built factories all over Germany to make it. Uh, you know, just, just uh, cement factories, steel factories, you know, concrete, and, uh, everything. And as you're talking about that idea of the, the 29 crash, it was this global impact. I mean, it wasn't just the, the, the U.S. market. Right. And when, when we... When, when we added to that crash, and that crash happened globally, Germany was suddenly absolutely destabilized, giving a super push for the opportunity that uh, Hitler stepped into. Yeah, and, and, and it was kind of a twofer, because not only did Hitler have an opportunity to say no to the international order, essentially, which was in chaos because of the Republican Great Depression of, right. of 1929, but also that, 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 you know, the Republican Great Crash of 29, it did go worldwide. You're absolutely right. And it hit the other countries of Europe. And it was one of the reasons, um, you know, I, I, I've often wondered, Louise uh, read uh, Rise and Fall of the Third Reich when we lived in Germany. Um, I read much of it, but not, the, not every, every single word of it. And, and her question, and my question for that matter, was, you know, why did the French just roll over when the Germans came in? Well, you know, we forget France, A, was still recovering from World War I. Uh, and 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 the the Spanish flu and everything else. But number two, France was mired in the Great Depression, and right. and a lot of French people thought, hey, look at the Germans. I mean, they they their economy is roaring hot. The Germans are back to work. They're making higher salaries. They're making more money. Yeah, Hitler's a little bit of a crazy man. He's got a funny mustache. But what the heck? You know, if they're gonna if he's gonna improve life in France, we'll take it. Not all French exactly. people said that, obviously, but certainly the Vichy France did. And something that's demographic about this that has only recently uh, hit me uh, as a you know a wow. Uh, I, I look back to um, the, the the rise and the actions of the Nazi Party, and I think about 1935 as this date. And think of a, a 13 year old boy in 1935. In 1940, he's 18 years old, and he has been through five years of national indoctrination, and he is ready to be part of Waffen SS death squads and just start running rampant because Hitler told himself. So. Yeah. Well, and the same thing was happening in Japan. You had uh, the the uh, kamikaze pilots who were willing to die for mm. for the sun god, you know, for the emperor um, Hirohito, I think was his name at the time. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm with you, Rich. And so alteration that I was never really um, you know, aware as this this progressive uh, over a multiple years indoctrination um, effect on, and, you know, where did these monsters come from? Well, they were grown, yeah. and it took a little time, well, and, and that's how it happened. Yeah, and we're seeing the same thing in the United States with Reaganomics and, and the demonization uh -huh. the demonization of minorities. <laughs> oh, it's an ugly truth. Yeah, it really is. Rich, i got to move along, but thank, thank you for you. the call. Very well said.